personally, you know, I, I do have to walk a very fine line in critiquing and judging because uh, that's tough for me. You know, I hate to judge people's art because it is coming from a place in their heart and soul. Um, but nonetheless, as far as business goes, you really do need to focus in on where they're at with their craft and their talent. And there are a lot of, you know, average players that if, in fact, they do put the time in and rehearsal and, and time alone with their instrument. And uh, if they're writers, of course, you know, expanding their horizons and spending some time in novels and, you know, epics and whatnot and learning all they can and bringing more and more to that, you know, particular band or song, you know. So, uh, what kind of music do you play? What kind of music do you play? Pierre, what kind of music do you play? What kind of music do you play? Well, it's kind of... think about what the band will draw as in the amount or where the clientele age group is or where they're coming from or what their background is. I always think about that as when I'm booking bands. The idea with the music scene is, is about threefold. You know, the one way is the bands that you like and you appreciate their style and music as in being original and up and coming. And then we, we actually give them Tuesday, Wednesday nights to start their course of music in this club. So on Tuesday, Wednesday nights, we do a really big variety of acts. They're not well known normally, but they're good, solid groups that will be hopefully well known within a year. And then, you know, you go into your Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, and you kind of think more about the draw of the actual band the style of the music. I always say leave your softer acts for your Saturday nights that are kind of a date night and do the kind of acts that are in your rhythm and blues and soul and funk and disco on those nights because they're more of a date dance night. Whereas your Friday nights might be a little more rowdy, you get your more rock and roll or rock and blues or even some of your reggae on those nights. You know, your acoustic nights, leave them to your Thursday nights or your Saturday nights. So definitely, I think about the types of music that should fit on a certain night. The young people, though, as I was young at one time also, tend to go out any night of the week. If there's a good act that they appreciate, they're going to go out that night, whether they're in college and studying or not. I don't think it makes a lot of difference to them. They may go home a little earlier or drink a little less, but they do go out if the act is there that they enjoy. So, for the young people, they go out just like I did four and five nights a week. And so it really is the following of the band, the style of the music, and what they enjoy that they go out with. Musicians in this area, we have really got ourselves into all the trouble that, that we have as a, as a community of musicians. We're badly organized. Uh, we smoke weed and don't answer phone calls. Uh, we don't take seriously packaging ourselves, marketing ourselves. It's kind of like we craft this diamond uh, in our talent and in our, in our thoughts, what, how we want to be perceived. And then we market it in a brown paper bag. And this is something that has been like my heartbreak about my community, about the musical community for the past 20 years, is that the most talented individuals tend to uh, ordinately be some of the most humble. So the people with the greatest amount of talent, I mean, they're not spending all their time on marketing, they're spending their time perfecting their craft. Uh, they tend to be overly humble. And as a result, we do not get the things that we require in order to perform correctly. It's great when you can get a label to get involved with your show as the person working for the venue. And your job is to bring in the bands and to sell tickets, which of course inevitably sell the drinks and 
food, if that's the case. Um, but, you know, uh, on the grassroots level, a lot of times it may take 20 or 30 phone calls to the very same office at a record label to get things done, and that still guarantees you nothing, that the record company is going to get involved with pushing it on the radio or doing ticket giveaways or things of that nature that actually you would think that the label would like to get involved in the heavy push when the band needs it the most, you know. But you'll find a lot of record companies are signing a lot of bands and never with any intention to do anything other than what is called shelve them and put them on the shelf. It creates tax write-offs, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that go along with the territory. Sometimes it'll take a band seven, eight, ten years before they get any kind of recognition from a record company. Sometimes it's something that happens really quick, but really quick is really still three or four years, except in the case that it's band members from a more popular band that might have disbanded and formed a new band. Then they'll get quick recognition because they may have already had a CD or record out. So we belong to the audience. The audience doesn't belong to us. The audience that comes to check out my show, it's really not my show, it's their show. They're the ones that determine uh, whether or not we're going to be a success or not. Uh, although they buy their own by coming and paying $10 to see me play, or however much it is they're to that paying to see me play, they're acknowledging, okay, for tonight, Pierre, you are the guy. Take us away. You know, what do you got to say? But really, we're beholden to them. They're not beholden to us. I feel right now that the trends in music are going to be, as they've been in the last 23 years for me, they'll evolve in and out of different styles of music. There's a lot of interesting things going on with recording live music over the internet. You know, an artist can be in Amsterdam, cut tracks on the guitar, you know, lay down tracks on the guitar. Another artist is in, you know, Tokyo, does the vocal tracks. Another artist is in San Francisco, one in Nashville doing the drums and the keyboards. And that can all be put together and actually recorded and produced right over the internet now. Good times can be had on stage. I mean, there's times when you're exhausted and you just reach in and get that little at last extra bit and you know you're going to be hurting the next day. But uh, that feels really good. I guess that's sort of like that runner's high or whatever. I think the songwriters are, are realizing that you can have a great song musically, you know, and then the music can have a certain emotion to it. But until you can really fuse that with really intelligent lyrics, really lyrics that really hit home, if you can fuse the emotion of, of the music with, say, a sentiment lyrically, then you've really hit it. Usually we'll walk down the street and bump into somebody and see that a dime rolled out on the corner and two guys fought for it and somebody had a radio in the back on and they were playing uh, Bye Bye Miss American Pie and some lady over here is with a Bible trying to get me to talk to her and we take all of those influences together, that snapshot of that second, and that is what the song is. That's where the song comes from. So in the way of, in the way of writing, uh, I think that's the, the beauty of their music. We capture snapshots of human life, slice of life, for lack of a better term. Stone, stone cold. 